I would like to introduce Robert Minty. He is a senior conservator at the Bodleian Libraries, specializing in the conservation of East Asian books and art on paper. He studied book and paper conservation under Chris Clarkson and Judy Siegel before completing an internship in advanced book conservation at Westin College in 1989 and was superintendent of the conservation bindery from 1992 to 2004. He studied Chinese bookbinding and scroll mounting in Hong Kong, worked at the Far Eastern Conservation Center in Leiden in 1996, and studied Japanese scroll mounting and conservation at the Usami Shokakudo Kyoto, Japan from 2001 to 2002. As an accredited member of ICON, he became an assessor for the professional accreditation of conservators restorers in 2003, and has lectured on conservation in the UK, Hong Kong, and with Chris Clarkson in Japan. He will, in the volume, he contributed with Nicole Gilroy and Marinita Stiglitz on the Bodleian Library, Chris Clarkson and the making of a conservation department. Thank you, Raya. Can you see my screen okay? Yes, perfectly fine. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, and thank you to you and to uh, Alberto so much for organizing this, this wonderful event um, in, in tribute to Chris. It's been wonderful to hear the contributions today. Um, and I'm very pleased to be presenting on behalf of Nicole, Maranita and myself. Um, it's impossible to overestimate Chris's impact on the present day conservation and collection care section at the Bodleian or his influence on the department's individual members. In our paper, we give an overview of the extraordinary extent of his innovations and achievements at the Bodleian. And for today's presentation, we've chosen just a few examples which help to convey Chris's legacy in our conservation work today. Chris joined the Bodleian Library in 1979 at a time when book conservation was still very much in its early development. And so the breadth of the innovations, conservation principles and um, concepts that he introduced, now very routine and familiar to us, were, were therefore all the more impressive and forward thinking. He envisaged uh, a wide remit for the conservation department, as well as designing and setting up conservation workshops. He was involved in a huge range of activities, including storage, handling and display of collections, introducing box pro boxing program, environmental monitoring, the clerks and phone book supports for use in the reading rooms, standards for exhibitions and loans and care of collections beyond um, including non-book collections, including library portraits and objects. He introduced documentation systems for the detailed record keeping. And of course, this was all pre-computer. And he developed standards for photographic documentation in conservation and the library imaging program. The workshops were planned in meticulous detail, and we've already seen some of Chris's wonderful drawings from, from Abigail. Um, here you can see um, a design for the box, uh, book boxing room on the left, which is specifically set up for phase boxing. He sourced and researched, researched high quality materials and equipment and worked with manufacturers to produce bespoke equipment, such as the laying press shown here on the right. He set about creating a conservation culture throughout the library, imparting conservation concepts and approaches to foster a shared conservation ethos. And at the same time, he continued to publish. In his seminal work, The Conservation of Early Books in Codex Form, A Personal Approach, he set out a philosophy on book conservation and reflected on the importance of training Chris had a wonderful ability to communicate with um, people on all levels within the library, to widen their knowledge and practical skills. He used the library's collections as a training resource, advocating a deep understanding of collections as, as essential before attempting conservation treatments. Although well known for his work and study of Western books, 
his interest extended to all book structures. And one of the first projects he set for junior technicians was the conservation of Chinese books. It was carefully pitched at exactly the right level for us, gradually introducing basic but fundamental conservation principles. And for me personally, his enthusiasm in teaching sparked my own interest in book conservation and East Asian materials. The project developed an appreciation of techniques which respected specific qualities and aesthetics of book structures and materials, encouraging inquiry, careful observation and developing an eye for detail. The study of these traditional thread sewn Chinese bindings with their folded leaf construction and the beautifully made paper twist forming the inner binding was a way of fully understanding materials and how things are made. Although Chris advocated a minimal intervention approach, retaining original materials and structures wherever possible, he also taught us the importance of understanding how book fu books function and the effects of past interventions, and therefore when great in intervention may be necessary. Here, the animal grew on the spine of, of the later Western binding and its effect on the book's opening characteristics. He also instilled the importance of accuracy and precision, always striving for the highest possible standards in practical work, even in the simplest of processes, such as folding a piece of paper. Around the same time, the curator of the Chinese collections was translating a book on the repair and binding of old Chinese books. The book became more than a direct translation with Chris's involvement, incorporating Western conservation approaches. And working with Chris, we experimented and explored techniques described in the translation to see how they would work in practice and for Chris to produce the beautiful illustrations which so perfectly captures the essence of techniques described in the book. Chris also used his observations to inform other ideas. For example, the concept of the Chinese book with its soft covered fascicles protected by their separate wrap around enclosures, partly inspired the fascicling system as an alternative to the traditional guard book for rehousing loose leaves. In the fascicling system he devised, the soft covered fascicles are protected by a separate box. The study of Chinese books and their conservation with Chris enabled me later in turn to pass on techniques to others. Here more recently to one of our interns, Morgan Royal, from the um, Institut National de Patrimoine, Paris. This gave a wide variety of courses and worked on projects with individual conservators throughout his time at the Bodleian and continued after he left. Courses were always carefully structured, starting with lectures covering historical background and context and the study of collection material before practical sessions, which were always delivered with a wonderful sense of fun. Chris also continued, as we've, we've heard uh, earlier today, to give lectures and courses worldwide. And in 2003, we were invited to give lectures and courses in Japan, where Chris was very much welcomed as a celebrity. Here we're giving a workshop on the sewing of primary end bands at the National Diet Library in Tokyo. Chris remained a consultant to the Bodleian, returning to conserve Bodleian treasures, often working with conservators to further their training and experience. In 2006, he worked with Marinita to conserve and remount the Goth map of Great Britain, a map on parchment dating from around 1400. Hundreds of photographs recorded every detail. Here, a transmitted light photograph of the lamb skin showing its backbone and ribcage, illustrating Chris's study of the, the item's materiality. Joseph Hogarth's bill on the left here highlights the importance of complementing what can be learned and observed with visual examination by undertaking further archival research, 
showing his interest in tracing an account of the lantern well beyond how it was made, trying to understand how it was used, displayed, stored and repaired. Maranita recalls Chris's sense of adventure and fearlessness in coming up with practical solutions. And here you can see Chris peering out of a custom-built humidity tent where the map is being pensioned. And here Chris and Maranita are tensioning the threads in the sophisticated mounting system and frame designed to maintain the map under uniform and light tension. Now I need to remember that day with relief, this extraordinary frame was working after all. Chris was also a highly respected craftsman and in turn recognized and appreciated fine craftsmanship in others. His great skill was clearly shown here in a fine binding now in the Bodleian's box form collection. The fact that his work as a fine binder has been collected by the Bodleians once again shows his stature. Bound by Chris in 1963 as a student at the Royal College of Art, he designed and cut tools for the blind tooling. It contains a description of his binding with interesting observations about the quality materials chosen and his design ideas already showing some of the considerations that would inform his career as a conservator. Attention to detail, careful choice of good quality materials, creativity and his regard for historical evidence. It ends by stating, work executed with good materials and great care. Here Chris is working with Nicole on an early uh, manuscript um, and you can see the, the, the lacing on the wooden, the oak wooden boards. And this again shows his connection with the department and his lasting legacy. There are a large group of people still at the Bodleian, technicians, conservators and managers who were directly trained and inspired by Chris at college or while working with him at the Bodleian. Many of the innovations, techniques and processes he introduced are still in use today. The principles of conservation he advocated still continuing to inform our work. Thank you. Thank you, Robert.